Hi everyone, this lesson is for geometry students. This is a chapter one test review. So find the length x of the segment given. So we have this segment right here in green and we have that value, that length. Um, we know that that length is gonna be whatever this value is, x value plus the value of 18. If I know that the whole length is 30, I would say x plus 18 the left side plus the right side is going to equal to the whole length. Now I would subtract 18 from both sides. I'm going to get x equals 12. So in this case, this would be the length of x or part of the um, segment. For the next question, it says there's 19 students in this class. 13 students have dark hair, which means six students have light hair. Then what is the probability that a student in this class doesn't have dark hair? So if they don't have dark hair, so 19 students total, uh, the students who don't have dark hair is six. So six out of the total, so you would say six out of 19. Another probability question, 25 marbles are in a bag. Uh, there's 15 blue, and so we've got 15 blue. We have four green, and the remaining are red. Well, how many are red? We need to know that. So we would say 15 plus four is 19. So we've got 25 minus 19, right? So that's gonna be six. So we know that six are red. So what is the probability that you select a red marble out of the bag? It's gonna be six red, six out of the 25. And then we just leave your answer like that. Um, from the review sheet, just some practice simplifying expressions. Remember that you, when you distribute, you have to multiply that five by both terms inside of the parentheses. So in doing that, we would get 5 plus 35r, 5 times 7, uh, plus 10r. And so 10 plus 35 is 45, so we have 45r plus 5. And that's our answer. So you can just box that up. Um, distribute again. We are going to get 3 minus 21x minus 9x. And remember, see these are both negative. So we're going to add the negative and the negative, and we're going to get negative 30x and then plus 3 and box that up. For this problem here on the left, we're going to distribute this negative 7 also to both terms. We get negative 70 minus 35p, and we're done with that. Now, it looks like for this part, we're done, but we didn't. there's still this 9 out here. And I want to really make it clear to you that you never, ever, ever multiply or subtract this nine minus seven first, as long as the seven is attached. So that's what I did here, is I've, I've taken this, this value right here, and that is that negative 70 minus 35p. But don't forget, you still have another part of this problem. See that nine out front? So nine now minus 70 is gonna be negative 61 minus 35p, and then that's our final answer. Uh, for this problem here, we're going to distribute as well. So this is going to be, this is going to be negative 7x plus 42 minus 4x. So in doing that, I have to remember that I have to combine my x terms. So I've got negative 7 and I've got negative 4, which is negative 11x, and then add 42, and then that would be my answer. Um, solving these equations, now not simplifying, but these are solving. So these, my x is actually, my variables, um, when I find do the solution, is going to uh, be, end up in a solution set. So in solving this one, the first thing I need to do is to isolate the b. So in order to do that, I need to remove this negative 10, and so I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. So now I have b over 2 is equal to, and then I'm going to, by moving it to the other side of the equation, I add the opposite. So negative 7 plus 10 um, is 3. So now I have b divided by 2 equals 3. Well, I'm trying to solve for b, so I need to uh, get rid of this divided by 2. So I'm going to multiply by 2 because that's the opposite of division. And I'm, these are going to cancel and make 1. I'm going to have b is equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, don't forget, your answer is going to be in a solution set because this is an equation. So that's the correct way to put the solution. Um, for this problem here, um, I am going to isolate the x, and I'm going to add 6 to both sides first. And in doing that, I'm going to get x over 2 is equal to 6 minus 4, which is 2. 
in order to isolate the x, I need to get rid of this divided by 2, so I am going to multiply by 2 in both cases. So x is equal to 2 times 2, which is, oops, not 2, not 2, 2 times 2, oops, 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay? Um, for this problem down here, um, 7x minus 7, what I'm going to do uh, for this problem first is add 7 to both sides. And in doing that, I'm going to get 7x is equal to 21 plus 7, which is 28. In order to isolate the x, get the x by itself, I need to lose the 7 times x. So in order to get rid of the 7 times, I'm going to divide by 7 on both sides, and I'm going to get x is equal to 4. Remember, this is a solution set, so put your answers in the set. The set. Um, for this problem, um, I'm going to... I'm going to isolate the end first. This is a little bit tricky, but see this line right here? That means divide. In order to get rid of this 3 down here, I'm, that says divided by 3, I'm going to multiply by 3. So not only am I going to multiply by 3 there, but also on the right. So when I do that, these are going to cancel, and I, they make 1. So I'm just left with 1 times negative 1 plus n. So that's negative 1 plus n is equal to negative 5 times 3, which is negative 15. And then... Completing the, uh, the equation, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm going to get n equals negative 14. Remember to put your answers in solution sets. For this problem, solving the equation, I do need to distribute first. So in doing that, I'm going to go, that's negative 10 times v and negative 10 times 8. So I get negative 10v minus 80, uh, add 12, is equal to negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8, minus 14v. So I'm combining negative 80 plus 12. Now remember, you have a negative number and a positive number. You take the sign of the higher number, and then you subtract. You just go to the side, go 80 minus 12. And then borrow 8, 7. This is going to be 6. This is going to be 8. So we have negative 68. Now, to move this negative 68 to the other side of the equation, I actually need to add 68 to both parts. So in doing that, let me move this up a little bit. In doing that, I'm going to end up getting, because this is going to cancel on the left, I get negative 10v equals, and then negative 8 plus 68 is going to be positive 60 minus, and then 14v. Now, I'm going to move this negative 14v to the other side of the equation, and whenever I move a number to the other side of the equation, it's you have to do the opposite, uh, the opposite operation. In this case, if it's minus, we're going to add. So I have to add... 14v to this side, that will get rid of those. And I'm going to add 14v to this side. So 14v minus 10v makes 4v, and that equals 60. And then what I have to do to eliminate the 4, and I'll put this over here, 4v equals 60, is I need to divide both sides by 4. So I get v equals, and again, this will be in solution set, and then just go on the side and go 60 divided by 4. Um, you are absolutely welcome to use a calculator, but, I mean, you don't really need it, right? Um, subtract 6 minus 4 is 20. Uh, this goes in 5, 15, right? V equals 15. So just put your answers in solution set. And if you like boxes, it's completely fine to box this up afterwards, but include the solution set and the variable. Um, for this problem right here, to solve the proportion, you're going to cross multiply. So that's going to say 5 times p plus 6 equals 7 times p plus 10. And again, I'm going to also uh, remind you that when you cross multiply, the only way you can cross multiply is if you have one term on the left and one term on the right. This, is, this counts right here as one term. Also, keep to uh, something important to note that you do have restrictions on this equation because you know that the denominator cannot be zero. So meaning if you were to say p plus 6, whatever that is, cannot equal zero, when, you're all, when it's all said and done, it's telling you, hey, by the way, p cannot equal negative 6. So keep that in mind. you got to know that. Um, let's distribute. So we have 5p plus 5 times 6, which is 30, is equal to 7p and then 7 times 10, which is, what, 70? Uh, get your p's on the same side. So I'm going to move the 5p over here. That's going to give me 2p. I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides, and that's going to give me 2p equals negative 40, and p is going to equal negative 20. Um, and so, again, put your answers in solution sets, and if you choose to box that up after that, totally fine. 
I'm going to cross multiply on these two equations. So again, because there's one term on the left and one term on the right. So we're going to go 6 times n plus 6 equals 8 times n minus 7. Now, just a note to self, again, you know that your denominators cannot equal 0. So if you end up getting like the numbers that they can't be, we call those extraneous solutions. They're actually not uh, solutions, but they are an answer. So just a note. Um, so just keeping in mind this value for this denominator here, um, n minus 7 cannot equal 0. So n cannot equal 7. So that's one of our restrictions. The other restriction is um, n plus 6 cannot equal 0. So n cannot equal negative 6. So if I get one of my answers is 7 or negative 6, that's actually what we call an extraneous solution. Okay, let's solve this and let's see how we do. Uh, 6n uh, distribute plus 36 equals 8n minus 56. So um, I'm going to subtract 6n from both sides and move it over here. So that's 2n. I'm going to add 56 to both sides. Okay, and that's going to cancel there. And what is that? 12, 5, 6, 7, 8, 92. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to solve for n. And when I get that, I get 92, and that's divided by 2. 2 times what is 9? That's 4. Um, subtract the 8, I get 1, 2, so that's 2 goes into 12 6 times, so n is equal to 46. And that's completely fine um, because it's not negative 6, nor is it 7. And again, if you want to, it makes you happy to box your answer up after you put your answer in solution sets, you definitely can. Um, for this problem, I'm asking you several things here. I'm asking you, number one, what is the slope of the line that's parallel to y equals 5? So let's just draw this line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here's y equals 5. It's a horizontal line, y equals 5. And the slope of this line, remember there's no rise, so there's no rise, so that's a 0. And there is a run, and that could be any number you like. 0 divided by anything is 0, which means that my slope of any line that's parallel to y equals 5 is going to be 0. Um, if I drew a vertical line, let's say I'm going to draw this line right here, which happens to be, let's just say, x equals negative 6. Um, that's my vertical line. Remember, I have a rise, so let's say my rise is, I don't know, 7, um, but I don't have a run, which would mean that my denominator has a 0. There's a 0 on my denominator, which means that the slope is what we call underneath undefined. Undefined. Okay? Okay. And then what is the slope of a horizontal line? Again, this is a horizontal, this is vertical. So the slope of any horizontal line is zero. Um, find the slope of the line perpendicular to each line given. So this right here is basically saying, hey, I gotta find the slope, and then I gotta find the slope that's perpendicular. So in order to find the slope, I'm gonna solve for y on all of these problems. So for this first one, I'm gonna go 5y, equals negative 2x plus 10. I'm going to divide everything by 5. I get y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 2. So my slope of this line, right, is negative 2 fifths. So that means that the slope of the line that's perpendicular is going to be positive 5 over 2. For this next problem, solving for y, I get negative y equals negative x minus 1. Um, y equals x plus 1. The slope of this line, which is in front of my variable here, is 1. Now, to find the slope of the perpendicular line here, I'm going to flip 1, right? It's going to be, this is actually 1 over 1, right? Flip it, I still get 1 over 1. But remember, you have to take the opposite sign. So my slope of the line that's perpendicular is negative 1. For this problem, solving for y, I get y equals negative 3x. Plus 0, I don't need to do that. So my slope for this line is equal as m equals negative 3, which is negative 3 over 1. So that means that the slope of the line perpendicular is going to flip and become positive. So that's going to be positive 1 third. For this problem, uh, we have 3y equals negative x. Dividing by 3, I get y equals negative 1 third x. The slope of this line is equal to negative 1 third, which means that the slope of the line perpendicular to this is going to flip, take the reciprocal opposite. It's going to be actually just 3. Okay. Um, for, the denom for the bottom values here, I'm going to solve again. It says find the slope 
but the slope of the line that's parallel. So again, I'm going to solve for y. For all of these problems, I am solving for y. So here we go. So we have negative y is equal to negative 9x minus 4. Distribute that negative sign, I get y is equal to 9x minus 4, which means my slope is 9, which means the slope of the line parallel is the same. So these are the same. For this problem here, solving for y, I get 4y equals negative 7x minus 16. So dividing by 4, I get y equals negative 7 fourths x minus 4, because I'm dividing 16 by 4. Um, the slope of this line is negative 7 fourths, which means the slope of the line parallel is also negative 7 fourths. Solving for y for this next problem, we're going to get negative 4y is equal to negative x minus 4. So dividing everything by negative 4, everything, I'm going to get y is equal to positive 1 fourth x, 1 fourth x uh, plus 1, which means my slope of this line is 1 fourth, which means the slope of the line parallel is also 1 fourth. Um, solving this last equation, we have negative y equals negative 7x plus 2 y, distributing that negative sign, we get y is equal to 7x minus 2. And when I say distributing that negative sign, what I'm actually saying is I'm dividing by negative 1 throughout. Um, anyway, my slope here is 7, which means that the slope of the line parallel is also 7. Um, for these two problems right here, I'm asking you to find the standard form of this equation of the line. So I'm giving you this point, so we're going to say y plus 3 is equal to the slope times x minus 2. Now when I ask you to put it in standard form, that means you've got to put it in the form that says ax plus by equals c, and which means that the a term has to be positive and it has to be a whole number. It's also parallel to this equation here, which means that and it's already nicely done in, in the slope intercept form, so I'm just going to take my slope which is negative 2, and I'm going to plug that in right there. So because if it's parallel, the slopes are the same. If it's perpendicular, you have to re do the reciprocal. So for this one, um, we're going to say, um, sorry, uh, y equals negative 2x, we're distributing, and then plus 4, and then minus 3, because I'm going to take this plus 3 and move it to the other side of the equation. So now I have y equals negative 2x plus 1, 4 minus 3, which is 1. I need to take this negative 2x and move it to the other side. So now I get 2x plus y equals 1. And we're in standard form right here. And just if you also want to just graph these, 2, negative 3. If my slope is negative 2, remember, go down over 1. And just keep in mind that slopes of that are negative always go uh, down right. For this problem here, um, what we have is point slope again, and that's parallel again, which means that I'm going to take this slope. So we're going to start in point slope form. So we're going to go y plus 5 um, is equal to my slope, negative 2 thirds times x minus 3. So it's telling me that the point is at 3, negative 5, and my slope again is negative. So going down 2 and over 3. So again, it goes down like that. Um, solving this and putting this into standard form, I do need to put my x and my y on the same side. But for this problem, which is a little bit different than the last one, um, I'm going to actually, um, I think I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 3. Because in doing that, I don't, I don't have to put it in slope-intercept form, right? And I don't have to solve for y. So what I'm going to do is distribute this 3. I'm going to get 3y plus 15. And I'm going to multiply this by 3. 3's are going to cancel, right? I'm going to have neg equals negative 2 times x minus 3, which basically the whole purpose for doing that was to get rid of the fraction. Um, I'm going to distribute this right side, which is negative 2x plus 6. And on the left, I still have the 3y plus 15. Um, for standard form, the x and the y need to be on the same side. So I'm going to take this negative 2x and move it over here. So we have 2x plus 3y, and then this positive 15, I'm going to subtract from both sides to move it to the other side of the equation. 6 minus 15 is negative 9. So therefore, now I am in standard form. 
for these two problems here, I'm writing the standard form of the equation. However, my slope, which is right here, this negative 2, um, is not going to be parallel, right? It's perpendicular, so it's a little bit trickier. I'm going to start off with our point, which is 5, negative 5. Um, and then let's take the slope. Um, if my slope here is equal to negative 2 over 1, then the slope of the line perpendicular is going to be positive 1 half. So that's the slope I'm going to use in my new form here. So we're going to take this y, we're going to go y, which goes with this right here. Take the opposite. So plus 5 equals 1 half. Let me rewrite that. It's a little sloppy. Uh, 1 half times x minus 5, which is this value here. Um, I'm going to distribute, uh, I need to put it in standard form. So, you know, I have an option where I can multiply everything out or I can multiply the entire equation by 2 to get rid of the fractions. Um, since I did that with the last problem, for this problem, I'm going to eliminate, I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to go y plus 5 is equal to 1 half x minus 5 halves. I'm going to move this 5 to the other side. I'm going to get y equals 1 half x um, minus 5 halves minus 5. Now, I can combine these two terms. Um, the way that I would combine those two terms, um, and I'm just going to move everything down so that I have more room. That's easy to do it like this. Um, the way I would combine those would probably get common denominators, and so I would multiply this by 2 over 2. So negative 5 minus 10, so that's what? Negative 15. So we got y equals 1 half x minus 15 over 2. Now, this 1 half needs to be on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to move my yeah, solution up here. And I'm going to get uh, negative 1 half x plus y equals negative 15 over 2. And now... I'm going to multiply by uh, negative 2 because in doing that, that's going to eliminate this, this divided by 2 and it's also going to eliminate the negative 1. Because remember with standard form, the a term, right, which is in front of the x, um, that has to be a positive whole number, which it's negative and it's not a whole number. So by multiplying by negative 2, 2's cancel, negatives cancel, I get x. Negative 2 times y is negative 2y. And negative 2 times this, 2's are going to cancel, negatives are going to cancel, and I end up getting 15. So here we go in standard form. For this problem here, again, we have a point 3, negative 5, and it's perpendicular to 3 fourths. So if my slope is 3 fourths, the slope of the line perpendicular is going to be negative 4 thirds, meaning down 4 over 3. So it looks like that. So let's use our point and put it in point slope form. So we're going to go y plus 5 equals my slope, which is negative 4 thirds times x minus 3. And for this problem, I'm actually going to multiply by the 3 so that I can get rid of um, this fraction. So in multiplying everything by 3, okay, I'm just going to do this like that. In multiplying everything by 3, um, 3 times y, so we get 3y plus 15, and then 3, right, times that. And then the 3 multiplied by that, those are going to cancel, right? 3s will cancel, and I'm still left with negative 4 times x minus, that's a minus, minus 3. And so I have to distribute that negative 4. So we got 3y plus 15 equals negative 4x plus 12. Um, I'm going to add 4x to the other side. So now I have 4x plus 3y, and I'm going to move this positive 15 to the other side. And remember, when I move something to the other side, you're, subtract, you're doing the opposite sign. So I have 12 minus 15, which is negative 3. So my final answer in slow, oh, standard form is going to be 4x plus 3y is equal to negative 3. All right. Um, these questions right here, I'm simply asking you to classify them as um, acute, obtuse, or right, and so in or straight. So remember, an acute angle, acute means that it's less than 90, obtuse is greater than 90, right is equal to 90, and straight is um, equal to 180. So for this problem here, this x value here, 
definitely looks like it's greater than, so x is greater than 90 degrees, so we would call this obtuse. For this one right here, this is a straight line, right? It starts here, the x is value. So that's going to be is equal to 180, so we call that a straight line. For this one right here on the left, this also looks like it's obtuse. So that value x is greater than 90 degrees, so we call that obtuse. Um, for this one, x does look like it's less than 90. So if x is less than 90 degrees, we call that acute. For this one, this looks like it's exactly equal to 90 degrees. So, and it, you know, I'm just eyeing these, so that's you know definitely my opinion. Um, this equals 90 degrees, so we call that a right angle. And this last one also greater than 90 degrees, so. If x is greater than 90, it is obtuse. Um, for this question right here, um, I'm giving you an isosceles triangle. Now, what you need to remember about an isosceles triangle is the following. Number one, both sides are equal. So that means whatever this is right here, this is also the same value. Um, perimeter is 24. What that means is the sum of all the sides together is equal to 24. So they're saying that 5x minus 2 plus 5x minus 2 and then plus my base plus x is equal to 24. So let's add these all up. So we have 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11. So we have 11x. Twos actually cancel. If the twos cancel, then what I have is, let's see, if the twos cancel, right? then I have 11x is equal to 24, so x equals 24 over 11, which if I'm asking you to find x, um, 24 uh, over 11 is about, what is that equal to? That's 2, 22, and 2 over 11. Not about, it's equal to that. Um, for the bottom problem here, it's asking you, it's saying the perimeter is 75. Well, again, the perimeter is the distance all the way around. Now, this is an equilateral triangle, which not only does it mean all the sides are congruent, but all the angles are congruent. And, of course, an equilateral triangle that has three congruent sides has e each of the angles is also the same value, right? So those are all 60 degrees. Um, we'll just get that question out of the way. Um, now, for the top part, I am trying to find x. So in order to find x, um, I know that this is 5x, that's 5x, and that's 5x. So 5, 10, 15. So we know that 15x is equal to 75 So because that's my perimeter. So now all I have to do is divide by 15. So I've got 75 divided by 15. So you ask yourself, how many times does 75 go into 15? So you can, do, you can use your calculator or you can just, you know, you can guess and then check your answer. Um, I would, you know, divide. Um, if you want to check your answer, you can just go, what, what's 15 times 5? And that's 5 times 5, 25, to 75. So we have the right answer. So x is equal to 5. And you can box that up if it makes you happy. Um, for these last problems here, um, we are doing some transformations. Um, for this problem, I want, to, I want you to reflect across the x equals 2 axis, which is this line right here. That's x equals 2. So not only do you have to know, well, what does x look like as far as um, is it horizontal or vertical? So if it's x equals, it goes through the x axis. So in flipping this over to this side, here's going to be u prime. Uh, this is still s prime. And going down over, so this is over 1, this is back 1, so that's j prime. And for p, we went over 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to go back 1, 2, 3. So here's p prime. So I just have to redraw this shape as a reflection across that line. And we're done. Okay, this one is saying reflect across y equals 1. So y equals 1 is here. See, this is 0. Right here is 0. And that means 1. And y equals 1 is a horizontal uh, line. Okay? And so therefore, this is y equals 1. So everything gets reflected across that line, which goes up like that, right? 
So if I took this line and I went down two, then I've got to go up two. So that's E prime. If I took this line and I went down one, two, three, four, right? I'm going to go up four. One, two, three, four. So that's, what is that letter? K. So that's K prime uh, right there. And then for this value, I went down from zero here. I went down one, two, three, four. Also going up four. So that's V prime. So the reflection um, transformate, you know, across the Y equals one axis is going to give you this line, that triangle like that. So for this translation, when we move x plus 2 and then y plus 6, what that's asking me to do, again, is just to go to the right 2 and then up 6. So what we're going to do for this is basically take each of these points, so label each of the points, so this is going to be uh, for d, that's negative 2, negative 1, so we're label each one. So D is at negative 2, negative 1. Uh, K is going to be at negative 1, negative 1. V is at negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So negative 1, negative 3. And for M, M is at, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's at 3, comma, negative 4. So when we do a translation, that means that, remember, x goes to the right. And so basically, if, let's say, this was you here, and I was saying, okay, I want you to translate this person here, you, x, 2 to the right. So that's going to go over 2 to the right. And if I ask you to go negative 2, that's going to go negative 2, right? If I say y plus 6, that's up 6, and y minus 6 is down 6, okay? So for this problem here, we are going to do it two ways. We're going to move our graph, number one, but also I want you to be able to just be able to strictly use the formula if you choose to do that. So for d prime, meaning if this says add 2, then I'm going to add 2 to my d point. And if it says add 6 then I'm going to, to y, then I'm going to add 6 to y. And I'm going to do that for each one of my points. So for d, I'm going to say negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, and negative 1 plus 6, which is 5. So for k prime, I've got negative 1 plus 2, which is 1, and negative 1 plus 6, which is 5. For v prime, I have negative 1 add 2, which is 1, and negative 3 plus 6, which is 3. And for m prime, I have 3 plus 2, which is 5, but negative 4 plus 6 is 2. So basically what it's saying is, is if I have this graph right here, and I were to take this graph and move it uh, 2 to the right, so I'm just going to pick my m value here, and I'm going to go 1, 2, so I'm going to go 2 to the right, and then up 6, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I would do that for each one of my points, right? I would end up getting 0, 5, 1, 5. I'd get uh, 1, 3, and then I would get 5, 2, which is this point here, and that's my m prime. So you would get a different value for each point. For this problem right here, we have a translation of left 2 and up 1. So in writing all these points, we're going to say, well, we have b, which is at negative... 1, 2, negative 1. We have W, which is at 0, negative 2. We have M, which is at 0, let's see here, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3. And we have Z, which is at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what did I say? Negative 3 and then 4? 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah. Um, M and Z. So for b prime, or for the new value of b, we are going to take our points and we're going to move two to the left. So basically, if I before I graph all the points, you know what it's telling me is that I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take these values right here, and I'm going to go two to the left, like that because it's x minus two and up one. So my new graph should look like this after I'm done with the actual, you know, using, um, using this formula for my translation. So this is telling me to go minus 2. So we have negative 2, subtract 2 is negative 4. 
uh, negative one plus one is zero. So just checking my point, B prime should be at uh, negative four zero, which it is. For W uh, prime, we want to go zero minus two, which is negative two, and negative two, uh, negative two plus one is what? Negative one. So then we have negative two and then negative one. And so that's my new W. So this is my new prime. And then M prime is gonna be one minus two, which is negative one. And then the three, you add the one for the Y. So that's gonna be four. And so we have negative one, one, two, three, four. And so that's my new M prime. And lastly, we have our Z prime, which is gonna be negative three minus two, which is negative five. And then four plus one, which is five. So that would be negative five, five, which is way up here. And I know that this graph here, I already did this, I had some technical difficulties. So anyway, I'm just taking up where I left off. Um, for this problem right here, um, this is a rotation of 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, origin being here. Um, the points that I have, I have S, which is at 2, 1. So we have S, which is at 2, 1. We have Z, which is at, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3. And then we have P, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2. So 5, negative 2. And so what we're asking for this problem right here is to rotate it clockwise, which is this way. Now, if you have your patty paper, you could absolutely draw this on your patty paper. Remember, put your pencil right here, and then rotating it is going to be one click. So it's going to turn it that way like that. But the formula um, for doing this translation, which is our rotation for x comma y, um, is going to be, uh, take your x and y, it's going to be y and then negative x. So my s prime value, I'll use a different color. So s prime is going to, for each one of these, I have to change the values, okay? So we have s prime, z prime, and p prime. Um, for x, so for each one, see the y is now moved to the front. So this one now is in front, so that's one. Three is in front, negative two is in front. So that's step one. Step two is to take the opposite of x. So if it's two, it's negative two. If it's four, it's negative four. If it's five, it's negative five. So my new points are gonna be one, negative two, uh, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, three, negative four, and negative two, one, two, three, four, five. So my new points are this new triangle here, which is the rotation, right? This is P prime, um, one, negative two, that's S prime, and that's a Z prime. And so that you can use your formula or you can definitely use your patty paper, et cetera. Um, a rotation of 180 degrees um, starts off with X, Y as our coordinates, and then that translates, around so that's a rotation of 180 degrees so that's going to be negative x and the opposite of y so i can use my points so basically you got to think about if you're here and you're taking this value here and you're rotating at 180 degrees about the origin you're going to end up over there so it should be somewhere over on the opposite side like over here so um, again you can use your patty paper and when you do that you're it's going to be click click it's going to be two clicks remember so again, I'm just gonna put my points down and I know my points are negative one, negative two, three, four, five. So this is a negative five and I guess I'm gonna call this C. So um, we have A, we have B, we have C and we have F. Um, so C, I think that was negative five, zero. And then F means that's gonna be negative five comma one. For A, that's gonna be negative one, two, negative three, one, two, three, three, negative three, three and then b is negative three negative two and so when i make i do all of my um rotations you know i'm going to get my new points i've got my a prime b prime c prime and d prime my new points um if i'm taking the opposite it's going to be three comma negative three it'll be positive three positive two it'll be positive five zero zero is neither positive nor negative so you don't have to worry about that and f is going to be I think I called it D instead of F. Sorry about that. Um, so let's put that back there. Um, and then F 
is going to be positive 5 and then negative 1. So when I graph my points, I have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. I have 3, 2, I have 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, and then I have 5, negative 1. So this looks, it's the same graph, twist. Um, for this problem, again, we, it's another pre-image. I know um, you have you have a lot to do with this, but I really want to make sure you understand this. So this is at negative 3, 0. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is at 6, 0. And this is 3, 4, 5, 6. Looks like 7. 6, 7. Is that what it looks like? Um, let me check. So over six, negative six, there we go. Negative six and then seven. So doing this translation, we're gonna go left one. Again, everything's gonna go to the left. One and then up four. So if I were graphing this, just for a um, visual, what this might look like, um, this is gonna look like this. So we're gonna take, let's see if this moves, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go left one, so over one this way, and up four, one, two, three, four. So now I'm up here. So just knowing that that like those are my new points. Okay. So given the points that I started with, um, we started with we have. Um, I'm just going to call this A. I'm going to call this B and this C. So at A we're at negative uh, three zero. B we're at negative six seven, and C we're at six zero. So for my uh, translations. We have A prime, B prime, and C prime. A prime, then if I go negative 1, so negative 3 minus 1 is actually negative 4. Be careful of that. And then 0 plus 4 is 4. For B prime, we have negative 6 minus 1, so that's negative 7. Um, and then 7 plus 4, which is 11. And then we have for C, we have 6 minus 1, which is 5. And then 0, 4. So let's just make sure we've got our point. So we have go... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's one of my points. That's my A prime. Uh, we've got negative, it looks like this is negative seven. Does that look like negative seven and then 11? Yeah. So, I mean, check your points like that and uh, good. Okay. So, for the last page, this is to find the area. And so in order to find the area, oops, hold on, a little craziness here. In order to find the area of these problems, right, we're going to use area equals length times width. All right, I do expect you to use a calculator. I want you to use a calculator. Um, for this problem right here, we have the area. So we have 1045.2 feet squared is equal to my length uh, times my width, which is 40.2. So all you have to do is divide 40.2 on both sides. So you have what? One, hold on. So you have uh, one zero, hold on, one zero four five point two, and that's divided by 40.2, and I get 26, so my length is 26, and this is, um, what is this? This is feet. And this is feet, so inches, um, we're gonna just say that's feet. Um, 26, if I wanted to find the inches, you know there's 12 um, inches and a foot, so you can figure that out, but we're just gonna stick with feet. Um, likewise, for this problem here, um, I'm giving you the area, so the area equals length times width. The area is 21.1 equals my length, which I have 7.8 times my width, and all I gotta do again is divide. So I got 21.1 divided by 7.8, and that's about, so I'm gonna change these to approximate, so it's about 2.7. Um, and this is yards, okay? Um, in this case, this one is saying find the area, but, uh, so I don't, I'm not given the area, I'm finding the area. Area again is length times width, so the area equals 14 meters times 20 meters, so the area is equal to 14 times 2, which is 28 and 280. So that's going to be meters squared. Box that up. And lastly, our area equals 43 times 36. And these are, um, looks like it's miles times miles. So we're going to go 43 times 36, and I get 1548. So my area is equal to 1548. Uh, 
miles squared. Um, so that's all we have for you today. Um, that's a chapter review. Um, yes, that was a long, a uh, lot of work, but um, I hope that helped you. If you have extra time to review, please watch the um, videos that are attached to your slate, as well as do the IXL um, optional review, which is a really excellent review for you um, if you have the time. So thanks for watching.